Father, we come and we enter into your presence this morning. We say, fill this place. Fill each one of our hearts. Anoint our ears to hear your word today. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus for the, the word to be ordered from heaven. And that it flow over clay lips that you form. That every ear, those that have an ear, let them hear. And today, God, we come in your presence and say thank you for a life-changing day. In Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said amen. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise. If you receive that for you, just go ahead and praise him. I, I, I need it. I need change. Amen. Mm. Hallelujah. You know, I, I watched God do a major change in my life from when I got saved to now. Still got things that need to be worked on. Hadn't arrived yet, so let me make sure I put that out there first. But, but you know, there comes a season in life that you start going, well, does anybody even really want to change? Now, I, I need y'all to do me a favor before we get started because I can already feel it in the air. I want you to stand up for a minute again. Hmm. Pastor, you're going to have us up. We're going we're gonna to get our exercise in today. I, I want you to shake it off. Get rid of everything, all your preconceived ideas of, of coming to church. Look, it ain't for my neighbor, it's for me. It ain't for my spouse, it's for me. It ain't for my kids, it's for me. It, it ain't for my neighbor up in front of me, it's for me today. And everybody said, amen and amen. So go on, high five your neighbor before you sit down and say, it's for me. Go ahead, be greedy today. Say, it's for me. Amen. Change. Y'all may be seated for a minute. Now I want to ask the question. Now that we got the week shook off, now when we've directed it to ourself and not to somebody else and not sitting here going, well, I know somebody needs to hear this. It's on YouTube, baby. You can send it to them. So what about you right now? Amen. You're here and God brought you here in this moment, at this time, for a reason. How many believe in divine moments? Today's divine moment, number one. Today's divine moment, number one. I don't care if you're 18 or 80 or 90. Let me, let me bring that up. It, 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 <laughs> How many in here would say there's some things in your life you'd like to change? Oh, okay, if that's you, won't you stand up? There, we're going. To, I told you you're gonna get your exercise. I mean, there is something that in your life that you would like to see change. Stand up. Come on. If you got something in your life that you want God to change, I want you to declare right now. We're going to see some change because, see, God's given me a word for you today. He's given me a word for me today. And you get to hear it. And everybody said, how many in this place pledged that they was going to do, they were going to a new resolution in the beginning of the year? Nobody's going to raise their hand now. now you know what? Studies show that of 45 million people, that the vast majority quits their resolutions by the second Friday of January. I don't know about you, for me, that's a long time in when you're doing it on your own willpower. And, and can I tell you something? We started our resolutions with good intentions. I, I believe that most of us sitting here have good intentions that God will make a change in our life. Y'all may be seated. I know y'all get tired. That's why I have to go home on Sundays and take a nap. <laughs> but we do. We start making resolutions and making plans to, to change something with, with good intentions. 
And then by the end of the year, we still weigh more than we'd like to weigh. We still spend more money than we really make. We still want to read the Bible, but we won't. So I'm here today to talk to those who really want to change. If that's you, go ahead and raise your hand. I want to change. I want to change. See, until I realized I needed a change, I was willing to let God make a change, nothing ever happened. I didn't wake up one day and decide I want to be an addict. I didn't wake up one day and decided I wanted to be angry. Life happened. I tried to change, but it never happened. And here we get to this place in life, we, 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 we get frustrated. We get exhausted. We'll get embarrassed because we hadn't made those changes. And we'll even get ashamed of the fact. How many of you know somebody, not you, I know it's not you. You're here on, on a Sunday morning. How many in here know somebody that they need change and it don't matter how much you pray for them, the change never comes. Can I, can I propose something today? Maybe it's not a physical problem. It's a spiritual problem. And the church said, ha. Mm, huh. Can I tell you something? It's frustrating to be stuck. Come on. It is. But then I have to realize there's hope. When I read the Bible, can I encourage you today to read your Bible? Can I encourage you to pick your Bible up, not your app, your Bible, and pick it up and read it? I read the life and I have studied the life of Paul. Because I'm going to be honest with you, Paul's like most of us. Paul had a lot of stuff going on in his ministry. He had the heart and the desire to watch many people get saved. That's all he wanted to do. He just wanted to go to Rome and preach. Can I tell you something? He made it to Rome. but not on the way he wanted to be there. This is what Paul says in Romans 7, verse 15. He says, I don't really understand myself. Have you ever been there? Just Have you ever been at that place where I just don't understand me? That's why I say, this ain't for your neighbor. This is for you. I I don't understand me. This is what Paul said, who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. And he's saying... I don't really understand myself. For I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. In verse 19, he says, and I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. In verse 24, he says, oh, what a miserable person I am. Paul. Going through some of the same things that we're going through today. There, there's some areas in my life that, I, I mean, I've been praying, but I, I didn't have the right mindset. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. And we'll give you three different types of, of mindsets. Because, see, we can have all the right intentions, but we can, might have the wrong strategy. We try, we try, and we try, but we keep doing it the wrong way. Come on. First thing we got to know is real change is not behavior modification. Come on. Real change is a spiritual trans, uh, transformation. Romans seven twenty four. Paul says this. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Thank God the answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. See, not behavior modification, but spiritual transformation. 
Even as Christians, we'll try and try and try, but then we have the wrong strategy. Because can I tell you why? Religion has always, and denomination has always come in and, and told us how to believe. Y'all ready? Because here we go now, because I'm going to hurt some of, I'm going to kill some religious cows today. You know, that first one, God then me. In other words, God drew me to his saving grace. But now I'm saved, it's on me to make the change. Come on, I got to do better. I got to perform better. And I, I, I got to, you know, I got to act a certain way around church people. Hello. Can y'all hear me in the back back there? Can you hear me way back there? Because you got to understand, it's not God, then me. In other words, it's not God, then I have to, I, it's all on my shoulders to do better. And that's what Paul was going through. Paul was, he was highly educated in those times, highly educated man of God. He knew the Torah from the inside and out. He actually knew what the Pentateuch was. Come on, y'all. So in other words, it's like this. So God saves me. When I get through being saved, then he says, well, good luck. I mean, that's like having your children and, and good luck. Some of us want to do that. <laughs> I got you here. Good luck. <laughs> See, God draws me to a place and he draws us to a place and he saves us. Then he, to tell us, go ahead. You got to work on this. Then things get crazy. And then we don't understand why for the life of us we can't change. Come on. I believe that God will help me with yelling at my children and my spouse. I believe that God will help me with my addiction. I believe that God will help me with, with, with all these things that I got going on in my life. My cussing, come on. Just because you're saved don't mean you to quit cussing. I know, I've heard you. But God saved me. Now it's up to me. That's the God and then me mindset. Then there's the exact opposite. You're going to find yourself here somewhere. You know, God, not me. I'm waiting on God to do everything. God wants me to quit cussing. He'll, he'll stop me from quit cussing. What are we laughing at? We have that. You know, get mad at your job. I'm going to quit my job, and I'm going to do it for the glory of God. I quit this job. He'll give me another one. Tell me how that works for you. In other words, I have no effort to put into this because it's God. God saved me. He brought me to it. He'll bring me through it. Oh, y'all ain't listening today. Y'all are not listening to this. If God saved me, then it's his responsibility to fix me. Mm. God, then me. I'm going to give you three mindsets. Two of them are wrong. Then God, not me, you know, God got to fix this. I, I'm waiting on God. I'm waiting on God to fix this. How many times have we said that? Let's be real with ourselves today. Let, let's be honest. I, I'm waiting on God to fix that. Or how many times is God's waiting on me? How many times have we had that mindset that, you know, it's either God and me or God and not me? And way too many things. And wonder why things are not being changed. 
Because see, most, I, I'm going to say almost all of our, our situations and problems that are going on, they're not physical, y'all. They're spiritual. We have a spiritual battle going on in our life. Because we're all spirit beings. He breathed life in us, and he breathed his spirit in us when we were born. We became spirit beings. Some of us has got better looking houses than others. Y'all will get that afterwards. But a God and not me mindset shifts all the responsibility from me to God. Mm. Everybody said. You know, some people, they want to get closer to God. But they won't read their Bible. I want a closer relationship with God, but we won't make time in our busy life to read his word. See, you can't separate God from his word because God and his word are the same. You want a closer relationship, it's more than a Sunday morning church service. It's it's getting his word. And the church said, you know, (laughs) I want to get closer to God and you ain't been back to church since COVID. I'm, 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 I'm tired of being broke all the time. I'm in debt up to here, and, and, and you know, I, I, need, I need to do something because I'm still spending more than I'm making. So then I'll go down with the lotteries at $60 million, y'all. I'm going to get a ticket, and I'm going to, I'm going to surrender it to God. And the church said, Most people, if they won $60 million, it'll kill them. I'll say it again. Most people win $60 million, it'll kill them. Because they don't know what to do with it. They don't have the mindset nor the, the spiritual maturity to handle $60 million. They'll be broken a year committing suicide. If you don't believe me, look at statistics. Facts. Now, let's get to the one that matters. God then me mindset, eh. God not me mindset, eh. you want true change, you want powerful change in your life that will last and be everlasting, it's God through me. It's God through me. This is what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 9, for I am the least of the apostles and, do, and don't, do not deserve to be called an apostle. He's already humbled himself to the point of saying, you know what? I'm the least of the apostles. I am. I, I, I've, I've sinned against God. Anybody in here besides me has sinned against God. So I'm talking to you. He says, I'm the least of them, but, but you know what? I, it ain't because of me. He goes on to say, because I persecuted the church of God. In other words, hey, I've committed murder. I killed God's people. But he humbled himself. He goes on to say, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them. And he did, y'all. Paul worked hard. He preached hard. He he did everything he could. I mean, heck, he was snake bitten. He was shipwrecked. He was beaten in the streets. He was persecuted. And then he, he listen, he, think about all the sleepless nights he had in jail. But he goes on to say, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Not I, but the grace of God that was with me. See, real change isn't God, then you. Real change isn't God and not you. Real change is God through you. Somebody say amen. See, the same grace that saves you is also the same grace that changes you. The same grace that saves you is the same grace that changes you. It's not behavior modification. Instead, it's a spiritual transformation. 
So if real change is God through you, what does this look like? I am so glad you asked. For change to be a spiritual transformation, it has to be spiritual. Right? A spiritual change, that means it would have to be spiritual. Okay. So, what do you mean spiritual? So, that means we have to spiritualize our change. Why and how? Why would I want to quit cussing? Why would I want to stop something? Number one. So now we got to spiritualize it. Well, I don't. I want to have good communications and glorify God. Y'all, y'all with me? So how? By allowing the power of God to take every word that's coming out of my mouth to help me bring it into submission. Come on. Somebody say the power of God through me. Come on now. You know, people want to have a closer relationship with God, and, and man, you get convicted that, you know, you're spending four hours a day on, uh, uh, you know, you get your weekly alert of how much time you've been on uh, social media, and you done spent 96 hours. <laughs> Some of y'all, hey, that's a lot of time. There's 168 hours in a week, so there you go. You don't spend 68 of them on social media. So why would I want to get off of social media? Let's spiritualize that. Because I want to love God and love people. I can't love people if I'm not engaged with people. Well, Pastor, I'm engaging. I'm hitting like on all this stuff. (laughs) Come on. So how... Can I give me the power, Lord, to lay this thing down and engage with God's people one on one? Let them know that the love of God is coming through me. And everybody said, <laughs> So we got to have a spiritual why, then a spiritual how. Zechariah said this in the Old Testament, verse 4, chapter 6. He says, Not by my might. Nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord Almighty. I'll never forget the first time I went to the airport. Because, you know, I I have flown a little bit. But I'm not a frequent flyer. Okay. And I remember when I went to the airport and they had these moving sidewalks. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That you just step up on and it takes you. Well, see, when, no, this is not an escalator. This is actually a sidewalk. Escalator goes up. And it's a moving sidewalk. And I remember as a kid watching the Jetsons. So here we go. We're, we're stepping over into, ooh, we're getting over here. Well, I knew one day I'd get to see this, flying cars and all this. Hallelujah. <laughs> and... and I'm watching people go to buy on that thing, and I'm walking. I had my little suitcase. I'm walking. I get over to the baggage claim. They done got their baggage and gone. See, the power of God is like that moving sidewalk in our life. It will move you forward in a timely manner. If you understand that the power and the spirit of God that dwells in you, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world, why won't be a problem? How won't be a problem? I need change. Come on, y'all. And everybody said, "Mm." God's got me in my season right now of organization. That's been mine all year. So as I'm studying this, I'm like, okay, why, God, am I having to get organized? 
It's easier to call Christy. Come on. I mean, what's spiritual about getting organized? Well, it's real simple because in the Word of God, He says He's a God of order. So how do I do it? One step at a time. Continuously reminding myself that I need to get in order. And He's a God of order. The Apostle Paul says that when the Spirit of God falls in a building, hear me, I need to warn this church of this. When the Spirit of God falls in a building, let everything be done in a decent and orderly manner. What does that look like, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. In other words, when the power of God is moving, don't, 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 don't just, just jump up and run here and start laying hands on people and praying for people. That's not, that's not order. That's not order. We have elders for that. Any sick among you, let them call upon the elders of the church and anointing them with oil and the prayer of faith shall heal the sick. Don't believe me? James 5, 14. Let everything be done in a decent order. Then God's got on me about my health. Why would I want to worry about my health so much? Spiritualize it. Again, with this is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Revival's fixing to hit. He doesn't say if. Revival's fixing to hit. We're going to be here seven days a week. Y'all get tired after three songs. I got to do this two and three times a day. Somebody told me the other day, quit being aggravated about your job. You're fixing to have to quit anyway. Revival's been to happen, and you ain't going to be able to go to work. Amen. This ain't work. I love, this is what I live for. And everybody said. So, you know, and, and so that means I've had to make, take measures that I normally wouldn't take to take care of my health. Trust me. Measures I normally would never take. Because I want to be around a while. Hmm. Yeah, I got to say this. See all them little kids running around? See them little kids running around here? That's why I got to be around a while. So I can see them have their revival. So I can let them see their revival. I want to be part of their revival. It probably ain't going to look like I want it to look. I got to be around. I got to marry this one and several more. I got to be around a while. I'm not prophesying, Jonathan. (laughs) We ain't prayed that joker up in here yet, because if we come in, they come in here and they jokers, we pray them out. (laughs) Not the day devil. (sighs) So we gotta spiritualize our why. Why would we want to go on a diet? How many of you know diets don't work? Oh, yeah, yeah, Pastor, I lost 60 pounds. Yeah, about eight months later, you had 65 plus back on you because it didn't work. You got to have a why for the change to happen. And then you got to have a spiritual how. So if you got a spiritual why, you need a spiritual how. Come on. H- how do I overcome addictions? Because I'm a child of God. I'm free from the slave of sin. Y'all, y'all with me? Come on. Because. Somebody say because. The one the son says free is free indeed. That's my how. Mm. My why is because I'm not a slave to sin. The one the son says free is free indeed is my how. Everybody said, 
you know, if you want to start praying with your spouse, why would anybody want us to pray with their spouse? Because, husband, that's what you should be doing with your wife. They didn't get that. We're going to come back and visit it again in a minute. But if we're trying to learn to pray with our spouse, watch. If we'll pray with them, we won't fight with them as much. Ouch. So if Jesus is my number one, and my spouse is my number two, I want to seek my number one with my number two. Any two coming together, touch and agree. Any two come together, touch and agree. There's power in agreement. So my spiritual why is because I want his blessings over my house, but now my how is we're going to touch and agree together. You want to see power of change? Come on. Everybody said. So we got to have a spiritual why and to define our spiritual how. And the church said, Hmm. We'll come back to that in a minute. Hallelujah. Hmm. See, real change isn't God, then you. Real change isn't God, not you. Real change is God through you. And everybody said, watch, because, listen to me now, this isn't a change of behavior. It's not a Behavior modification. It's a change of heart. It's a change of heart. Because if you don't change that heart, that behavior is coming right back. Oh, Pastor, you just said a mouthful, and I did. It's right there. You change that. Mm, you can change your behavior for a minute. But if you don't change that heart, that behavior is coming right back. You can sustain, that's why I say a, a diet will work for a minute, but it doesn't last because the heart hadn't been changed. How do we change our heart? Through the power of God in us. Understanding it's the same grace that saved us is the same grace that will change us. Help us change our heart, God. Hmm. Not our behavior. Come on. How many in this place would say, I'm sick of being stuck? Hallelujah. Maybe here you are today, and maybe you work too much. And you procrastinate on things that you shouldn't. Maybe you skip church too much. Maybe you're still going to them sites that you know you shouldn't go to. Maybe, maybe, maybe you're holding a grudge. Are you just wasting life on things that don't last? Can I give you a houses won't last. Cars won't last. Banking accounts won't last. Eternal things last. We are to meditate on the eternal things more than we do the things of this world. I didn't say God didn't want you to have nice stuff. I'm saying that we have to, on purpose, have a spiritual mind change that reflects our heart and quit worrying about so much stuff. Boy, I'm preaching to the choir right now. Working way too many hours for stuff that won't be here that you're going to leave for somebody to fight over. And y'all said, come on. Why we don't get changed, there's a lot of reasons sometimes why we don't get changed. But if we'll dig down to the root it's probably going to be, always be a spiritual 
reason. You'll never, never meet a need or relieve a hurt without the grace of God. And the church said, Paul says in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, Pastor, it's 12 o'clock. You know we're hungry, right? You ought to be hungry for this right now because this will change your life. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, God said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ can work through me. Not behavior modification. Can I ask a question and you'll be honest today? I know we're in church, but a lot of times people don't like to be honest because they're afraid what somebody will think about them. Um, how many in here would say, you know, sometimes anger just makes my mouth engage when it shouldn't? Come on. How do we overcome it? See, that ought to be something that we ought to, ought to really be working on. Do you know self-control is a fruit of the Spirit? There's nine. But boy, I've watched people go across through them and they'll get to self-control and they'll skip over it. Self-control. Anger is a is what the enemy will use and call and use you as a puppet to take the glory away from God. And to rob you of the blessings that God has for you. Come on. There's sometimes, I'm telling you, there's some people I know, I understand, I have to deal with them myself. That, Lord, if you just give me five minutes. I know they're your, they your sheep, but they bad sheep. Five minutes. I just want to give them the five-fold ministry right quick. And yep, Y'all help me. It's It's okay. It's okay because you know what? Anger is a spirit that God gave us. But we use it wrong. We're supposed to use our anger to get mad enough at our situation to do something about it. Get mad enough at our situation to do something about it. That's, so, so, so what do you mean by that? You just said it's a spiritual problem. It is a spiritual problem. How about when Adam and Eve was born uh, or, or in the garden and, and God come to them after they done sinned against him and, and they're over there freaking out, you know, done covered himself up because they knew their sin was exposing them. That angered God. God has a wrath. And we're created in his image and his likeness. But did you see him smite them down? I don't know about you, but I don't want to see God's name. I want to see his glory. If we could just get God to help us with that one thing right there. God, help me. Help me use my anger for what you created it in me for. Mm. And everybody said, change our heart, God. See, we get mad at people. When we quote the scripture every week, all the time, come on, we don't wage war like the world does. We don't fight flesh and blood. But principalities and darkness and rulers of high places that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Our weapons are not carnal, but they're mighty through God in the pulling down of strongholds. That's the Bible. There's our why, and there's our how. How do we do it? Well, why? First, we, we want to control our anger. And, you know, it's good going right. Look here. I ain't fake. I tell you how I feel. What if everybody told you how they felt? That's the problem with our world today. It ain't about how you feel. It's about how God feels. 
if we're Christ followers, we're chasing after him. Come on. How many in here has forgiven forgive somebody? Or you've forgiven somebody? Do you even know what forgiveness is? True forgiveness is you giving your right up to ever bring it up again. Not carry it around in your pocket and pull it out when it's convenient. So my spiritual why is because I want to glorify God. My spiritual how is my weapons are not carnal, but they're mighty through God, through, through God, through God. It's through the grace of God. I can't do it on my own, but through God. So now every time I get a victory, he gets the glory. Every time I, I overcome, he gets the glory. Every time I get that opportunity to, to tell somebody what I think and I don't, he gets the glory. Every time that the love of God flows. He gets the glory. Why? Because I want to glorify him. How? It's understanding it's the same grace that saved me, but also deliver me. We far, far from through with the power of change. Because I believe that we live in a time where change is inevitable. I said it, we live in a time where change is inevitable. We live in a time where change is inevitable. We need some change in our life. We need some change in our city. We need some change in our schools. We need some change in, in, the, in the marketplace. We need, we need some change in the church. And the church said. So how many would say, I need some change? If you will, as our praise team cup, if you'll stand to your feet, I'll, I'll try to let y'all go. I ain't quite sure yet. I'm tired of wasting time on things that don't matter. Is there anybody here with me today? I'm tired of wasting time on things that don't matter. That has absolutely no eternal value to whatsoever. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, everyone in this place that stood today and said they, they need change in their life. Holy Spirit, we just ask in the name and the authority of Jesus that you minister to your people. You walk these aisles and walk through the hearts of each person here that says, I won't change. I can't help what somebody else does. I can't fix my spouse. I can't fix my kids. I can't, I can't fix my family. I can't fix my mama. I can't fix my daddy. But Lord, we're standing before you today say we need your power through us. Help us to understand our spiritual why so that we can get our spiritual how. That we can be overcomers because we do understand that through your power, through your blood, and through your grace, Greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. And today we surrender to that. Empower us to overcome. Empower us for change. Let us glorify you in all that we do. Father, that our families will reflect you. Our homes would reflect you. Our, and our business transactions, we will reflect you. And we'll give you the praise in advance. Now glorify yourself through us. Holy Spirit, do a work that only you can do. Help us heal and mend our heart. In Jesus' mighty name. And all of God's children said. Come on, somebody give him praise in his house.